This is The Girl with the Flute, until 2022, thought to be a painting by Johannes Vermeer. Although, it's never really been accepted as a painting by Vermeer, and the attribution has always been contentious. But in 2022, the owners of the painting, the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., declared with a fair amount of confidence that this was not done by Vermeer, but by, in their estimate, a close associate. Any discussion of this painting cannot ignore or evade a discussion of its sister, the girl with the red hat. Two paintings are similar in size. They're both painted on wood, which is unique to Vermeer's paintings. Vermeer usually painted on canvas. And by my estimate, they depict the same woman. She has the same eyes, the same long nose, the same plump lips. The shape of her head is identical. The compositions are the same. The women are seated on a chair with, a, with lion head finials. They both wear blue and are in fancy dress with extravagant hats. And both sit before a, I would say, expressionistically painted tapestry. Now, I think the question of whether or not Vermeer painted this is a good one. There is a choppiness. It lacks the characteristic elegance, almost obsessive carefulness of Vermeer's brushwork. The carefulness of everything in a Vermeer's painting. Vermeer's women are elegant. They are arranged as the objects of a still life. This woman just sort of seems to be sitting. It's a much more naturalistic depiction than you would normally see in a Vermeer. Just comparing it to its sister, the woman takes the Raphaelesque pose of turning to the viewer. The serpentine curve of her body is evocative of a sudden moment, a still moment captured by the painter, and is echoed with the curving lines in the tapestry. Her face is perfectly framed by the brilliant contrast of red and blue, lion head finials blocking her in, and the tapestry blocking her in from the other side. You don't see this in The Girl with the Flute. She's just sort of sitting there at the table. Her pose is not elegant. Her shoulders are stooped. She's leaning on the table as though tired. And while we see the same lion head finial on the chair and a similarly sketched in tapestry in the background, they don't really have the sense of creating a space there's a very significant lack of space in this painting. And that is one of the defining features of a Vermeer painting. You don't just look at the objects in a Vermeer, you look at the space around them. It's this sense of being in the room with those figures. This is a very flat painting. There's no sense of perspective. And that is extraordinarily unique when considering a Vermeer painting. Vermeer's paintings are not flat. They are deep. They go back into space as though you could reach your hand into them. And as I said, there's the somewhat inelegant brushwork. This is a tricky question for this painting because in both paintings, Vermeer is experimenting with a loose brush style, an impression of painting fast. But while in The Girl in the Red Hat, this seems to be just an impression, a carefully controlled impression. In The Girl of the Flute, it seems to be true. It seems as though these brushstrokes were laid down fast. I think this is particularly evident in the tapestry, which, rather than being a unified whole with a color scheme that unites it into one entity, it's more like an expressionistic painting with objects floating in space. They don't seem to meld together into one thing. You can tell it's a tapestry, but I feel like I can tell that because I've seen the girl with the red hat. Another thing that seems very choppy is her hands. They seem amateurish, unfinished. Particularly her right hand seems kind of ugly. Looking at all the qualities that I just talked about, I, I think that there is a perspective from which you can see these as still being the hand of Vermeer, but simply an odd exception to the rule. So look at the hands. They are kind of awkwardly painting, painted. They do look unfinished. But there are other paintings of Vermeer with awkward hands, and hands are hard to paint. Vermeer is a great painter, but he wasn't a perfect painter, and he suffered from the same struggles that all artists suffer with. You plan a composition, you put the hands in a certain position, and then when you're painting them, you realize that 
in the light you've put this figure, the hands look odd. You've placed them at such an angle that this particular person's hands look a little awkward. You don't quite know what to do. And considering that these paintings are likely experiments, I mean, they are experiments. They're different from all of his paintings. The style is strange, unique. Maybe Vermeer realized he had made this mistake or came upon it in the process of painting and just decided to go on painting anyway. Let it be awkward. It's an experiment. The same thing can be applied to the brushwork in the face. The coloring of the face is extremely similar to the girl in the red hat, with green shadows and red light. This woman obviously has a pinkish hue to her face, and it's pink in the same places and white in the same places. But there's a lack of care given to this one, a care that you can see obviously in the girl with the red hat, the blending that incredible blending that you see in a Vermeer painting that just leads you to these bright patches of white that build and build out of nothing, like light emerging by infinitesimal degrees out of darkness. But here the light and shadow meet each other rather harshly, with hard lines between them. This is different, but doesn't mean it's not a Vermeer. Could it just be that, as an experiment, Vermeer wanted to make this fast? Maybe this is just an unblended Vermeer. And that leads me to the hypothesis that maybe this is not a copy of a Vermeer painting, not a painting made by an associate of Vermeer in Vermeer style, but simply the one he made first. He made this painting before the girl in the red hat, worked out his ideas, experimented with them, and then once he had decided on these stylistic innovations, brought them to bear on the girl in the red hat and raised this painting to his characteristic level of refinement and perfection. Now speaking of perfection, I, I think I should say that both of these paintings are very odd in Vermeer's oeuvre, and neither one of them is perfect. In some ways, both paintings are bizarre. Take the girl with the red hat. Now she's seated in front of a tapestry, but where does the tapestry end and the room begin? It seems to end along this line here. That would mean that this is a floor line? Well, why are the lines of the floor painted in such a loose manner, echoing the loose flowing lines of the tapestry? And this section here, is this a part of the tapestry? A part of the image obscured by her head and we just can't recognize what it is? Or is this a bunch of pillows and blankets? Is this a piece of furniture? It's hard to tell. Maybe this is actually a bed and these are pillows on the bed. And then there's this bizarre section right here. Whereas the tapestry seems to be pushed into the background, pushed back by these objects depicted in front of it, this small section because of the brightness of the colors, the blue and the green, contrasted with the yellow ochre, stands out much more than the rest of the tapestry and pushes it forward. And because there is this face depicted here, in such close proximity to her face, it's almost like this part of the tapestry is jumping forward with this figure whispering in her ear. Now what is it whispering? Is it an angel on her shoulder, or a devil? This is something that I think about with this painting because of the two lion head finials. And they're odd depiction. And they are odd. First of all, they're not facing the correct direction. We see this finial from a three-quarter perspective. It's facing slightly to the right of the viewer. But this one is facing right towards us. They seem to belong to the same chair, but they're not facing the same direction. And the difference in their depiction, specifically the difference in their highlights, with this one in slight shadow, and therefore with fewer highlights, and this one in direct light, with many specular highlights, somewhat deforming our perception of it, suggests to me a depiction of two opposing views, an angel and a demon, a noble lion and a monster. Obviously there's a mane, and obviously there's a face in the middle, but the face is so distorted by these specular highlights that it looks more like a grotesque mask. This is just my reading of the painting. I like to really read deeply into Vermeer's paintings. To me, they're so evocative, 
and the subjects are so simple, and yet so much was put into them that I can't help but feel that Vermeer has these deep psychological meanings to all of them, and that every one of these details matters. But they're so odd. They're so obtuse in a way. Vermeer never really hits the nail on the head. He doesn't depict an angel and a demon. He depicts two lion-head finials, with one of them clear and one of them deformed. He places this odd tapestry figure right next to the head of the lady, as though he's whispering in her ear. It's up to the viewer to sort of piece these together and build a psychological projection in your own mind about what's happening in the consciousness of this woman. So with that in mind, my question is, do we see the same kind of psychological penetration in The Girl with the Flute? Well, I definitely see the same oddness. There is a strange kind of lack of integration in the background. As I said before, it's kind of like these patches of color floating in space, not really integrating into the sense of a tapestry. That's different from The Girl with the Red Hat, but it's evocative in a similar way there is definitely a sense that there is a scene behind her, almost like here and here, these are figures standing in a space. But at the same time, I have the sense of these shapes somewhat forming a face. This is an eye, a penetrating eye, a kind of evil eye, an eye looking into her, placed again right beside her face, just as in the other painting. And oddly enough, this finial is distorted. We can tell it's the same one because we can see the same characteristic shape. This swooping U-shape at the bottom is identical to the shapes in this painting. So it's pretty obvious that this is the same chair. But it's depicted distorted like the finial on the right. Now this finial represents evil or the devil on one shoulder, then it is significant that its opposite is not depicted in this painting, only the devil. And here, the eye looking into the woman is the eye of a demon. Is it beyond plausibility to wonder if this is a depiction of hell, with the devil overseeing, the souls suffering, and the tongues of flame enveloping them, depicted not necessarily representationally, but expressionistically. This would not be far off from Vermeer's The Woman Holding a Balance, where the expressionistic depiction of a last judgment gives significance to the woman in the foreground holding a scale, the quote-unquote scale of St. Michael, by which souls are to be judged at the end of the world. I don't know the answers to these questions, but the fact that these questions exist and that I can't avoid asking them it's one of the things that makes me think that this is a Vermeer. Maybe its distinctiveness from the girl in the red hat is intentional. Its omissions pointed. Maybe the figure's lack of grace is meant to communicate something about her. Maybe this painting is the sister of the girl in the red hat. Her evil sister. Yeah.